Okay, so for this Lars lab, what I wanted to focus on was what I would like to call combat readiness. And what I mean by that is I mean specifically dealing, basically, here, here's some tips on how to just, while just playing the game, and this is for all levels, as usual, how to be ready for certain situations. People often wonder, how am I supposed to be ready for like every possible thing? in the game. There's like a hundred moves per character, there's all these scenarios. Well, you obviously can't be ready for literally actually everything a character does. That's impossible. There's no way you'll be ready for everything. That said, in the case of Lars, you can at least simplify it to some scenarios. And there's certain things you can do to be ready for certain types of scenarios. Now, what I'll focus on today is just the rudimentary stuff. So like block punishing, whiff punishing, etc. And my basic tip is this, and this is something hopefully I, I think people find useful. A lot of Lars's core punishes revolve, at least at least this range, like the range where I am right now, these punishes rely specifically on two. Because a lot of his punishes come from two as a starter. Now one two, which used to be his best ten frame, in terms of like frame advantage and speed, that used to be the staple, but 2-1 is now the better option because it does 20 damage. Because look at that, 16 damage, 20 damage. So you actually want 2-1. So let me run through it. I mean, obviously for some of you, y'all already know this, but I'll just run through it anyway so everyone gets the idea. 2-1, that's his best 10 frame punish or jab punish, right? 4-2-4, four, four, that's his best 12 frame punish, right? As we all know. Forward back 2-1. That's his best 14 frame punish, and that's for, you know, very specific moves or can be used as a launch punish. And forward 1 plus 2 is his 15 frame punish. Uh, and obviously you can just substitute that forward back to you one if you're comfortable with the input. So, realistically, you could actually just have your finger, your hand, your whatever hovering over 2 constantly, because the vast majority of things you're going to be punishing with Lars up close will be with 2. Like, literally. So, if you have your hand hovering or your fingers hovering over 1 and 2 at all times, then you're basically covered. So, you can be ready for multiple scenarios because you already got your hands on the appropriate buttons. And all you have to do is figure out which is the right one to respond with. So, what I did was I set up CPU Jin with a bunch of uh, actions that, you know, let's say Jin's players would do on, on the regular. So, like, while standing 2 and... Uh, 1 plus 2 and so on and I set it to 50 for each so each has a chance of occurring at any random interval and I don't know which one it is and the, the, the point of this exercise is to make it so that he will do one of these randomly and I have to react to it so with my finger hovering because I use a pad I use the uh, Nacon PS4 compact controller it's a wired controller officially wired controller god I wish there was more PS4 officially wired controllers uh, that weren't terrible so I have my hand hovering over the triangle button, which is, of course, 2. So I'm going to let him just go, and I will try and hopefully demonstrate what I mean when I say, like, just if you have your fingers or your hands hovering over uh, 2 at all times, it'll at least give you that preparedness for what T-Fusion is going to do. So I don't know what he's going to do if he does it at random, while standing 2. While standing 2 again. So my hand is just hovering over 2. He's doing while standing 2. And anytime he does something, I'm ready because my my finger's already over two. There's a 14 frame, right? Because his punishes keep revolving around the two button, you will always start from two. Do you see what I mean? So that's actually a minus 12, but I couldn't really find a... Let me uh, pause for a second. Uh, sweet Getsu Strike. I couldn't really find a minus 11 or minus 10 move uh, for, for Jin real quick, so I just chose that because that's minus 12. So I use an example of a 10 frame punish move. So let's keep going. So you see what I mean? Uh, you could basically just have your fingers hovering over that, so you will always be ready to punish it at all times. Oop, that that's definitely not the right punish. And also that realistically you want to be punishing that with because it's three get two two one. You want to be punishing that. Okay, that's a fourteen frame, so minus fourteen. Let's say that's minus ten. That's definitely minus fourteen. The thing is, as I'm sure you saw me doing, you can punish anything that's higher than minus 14 with forward back to 1 because it's a 14 frame move. Fair enough. You don't really need to do anything higher than that. That was way too slow. 
because that's exactly minus 14. So that's 12 frame, and so on. You basically get the idea. The idea is simply to put yourself in a position where you're ready to punish the appropriate moves with the appropriate button. Because they all revolve around starting with two, basically. And I'm hoping... Oops, I'll see I'm hoping he does can-cans again, because I actually want to do Arc Blast. Just do 2-1 just to... Pull back 2-1. And there's something I'll explain in a second, hopefully, when he does can-cans again, because I actually want to explain something that I think will be hopefully helpful to sort of newer Lars players, or players who aren't quite used to all of his inputs. And also, it's also something that's actually just good for practical gameplay. There it was, there's can-can, I wasn't ready. Combat readiness, huh? Oh, that's not Arc Blast, what the heck? That's Arc Blast, there we go. So, one thing that tends to happen in sort of the heat of battle is that you're not always going to be ready for a launch punish. Obviously, this Jin, it's CPU Jin, he's standing there, he's on a timer, he's going to do stuff in intervals, but in a real match, you're not going to be ready all the time for every single thing your opponent does. You can practice, of course, you can practice matchups, but it really depends on your opponent's habits, your opponent's timings. You can't always be ready for every single situation where they're going to throw out something. Uh, and you, you even see with pro players, pro players don't punish everything perfectly the entire time. That's why punishing is so impressive, because when you can be consistent with it, it's actually pretty amazing, right? But you can't always be ready for that. So you, you shouldn't have to feel the pressure to be ready for it constantly. So that said, uh, one thing you can do, with the exception, of course, of certain moves, if especially if your opponent has a lot of unsafe stuff, so like a, a Noctis or geese surprisingly or um art well not armor king armor king surprisingly safe or julia honestly characters like that you if let's just say that you're not confident with your your forward back to one you're not confident with your one plus two uh forward one plus two you could honestly just kill people like just wreck entire characters just with four two four 32 damage 12 frames that's really solid let's just say that for the sake of training you spend an entire match just four two four in people so a lot of the stuff CPU Jin's gonna do, I can just 4D4, that was actually a whiff. I can actually just 4 2 4 it. Oh, that's too slow. So that's fine as 14, but let's say I'm not ready for that. Let's say the Jin just threw that out in neutral. It's like, okay, I wasn't ready, 4 2 4. It's not a combo, sure, but it's still solid damage, right? That's still really good. And there's a launcher, same thing. 4 2 4 is solid punish damage. And also, because it's only minus 12 on block, you're safe, but obviously it's high high, so if your opponent knows that, they can just duck the second hit on block if you did it at the right on the wrong time. So you see what I mean? You can just 424 your way through it if you are not confident. If you're not confident with doing the other punishes. And honestly, just keep sort of keep your mind on 424 anyway. Because if you're just playing the game in general, just make this your go-to punish. Like just let your opponent know that you're not just gonna sort of jab punish everything because you're unsure like just let your opponent know that's definitely is that minus 12 to 11 maybe it is let your opponent know that you you will punish their move even if maybe it's not a launch like as if you're starting out especially if you're like a new Lars player just being able to give them that basic damage is a good place to start honestly so if you can do that I think that's really good uh, but you don't have to worry too much about getting like the bigger punishes until you're really confident with the character and then you'll have to start doing it. Because I, as I said, there's like 100 moves per character. Some characters have 100 plus moves. So you're not always going to be ready for when they... I mean, here's a classic scenario. You're playing the game. You're you're doing neutral. Your opponent's on the same thing. And the... Ooh, flat baddie. Thanks for following. Thanks for following. I appreciate that. Uh, you're not always going to be ready for that one time that someone's going to freaking throw out like... You know what I mean? Like, let's say you're, you're fighting a djinn. And the entire time they're doing the same moves and then all of a sudden they do one plus two or they do that can can like how often do you see a Jin do can can just in neutral you're not going to be ready for that so sometimes you just freak out and you do four two four and you know what that's not terrible because it's like okay well you didn't get the optimal punish but you still knock them down you still don't knock them back you know what i mean you can't always a hundred percent of the time be ready and if you're ready for it all the time, then you're freaking godlike, actually. Like, if you're ready all the time, that's incredible. Like, I I think that's fantastic. But you shouldn't feel that pressure to do that. So I would say that one thing you can do is, let's say you have a bad matchup or you fought someone. Go into training. Do what I've done. Set recording to one move per slot and set them all to 50, 20, whatever, whatever interval you're comfortable with. And just 
press play and the CPU will just pick a random one and just do it and you have to try and punish that just try and get consistent with that because while it will never emulate an actual match where people are actually doing stuff constantly it can it can at the very least it can at the very least give you an opportunity to get used to dealing with a move when you see it because at the end of the day you want to be able to react with something you can't always react as i said with the appropriate thing but doing stuff like this where you have them do it randomly and i mean also if you if you want you can have it just set to cpu and just see what they do and punish it that way that works for me but that might not work for everyone you can just have it like this where the cpu just throws out random moves and you just you know just for maybe a couple minutes at a time doesn't have to be too long you just punish each one in sequence and just see if you can get used to it because you need that muscle memory you need that consistency because eventually if you're in an actual match imagine the one time someone does it and then you're like oh my god i'm ready for this i've seen this a billion times so you're ready for it you just punish them you see what i mean oops that was back to one oh boy right and so on and so forth so i think that is in my opinion very important okay so one thing i want to move on to now let me check my notes here is punishing at the wall so it, another part of let's let's call it combat readiness quote unquote is kind of being ready at the wall because things change a little bit for Lars I think for other characters it really it doesn't matter too much but for Lars the wall because the wall is like a big part of his game plan the wall really changes up a lot of things so even though certain punishes might be appropriate for the move in like say well let me go back to mid screen actually certain moves might be upon, uh, appropriate for certain moves in neutral right so let's just say he does what's he gonna do right that's appropriate because that's a launcher so you want to knock him down and you want to push him to the wall you see what i mean right that's appropriate because we were in neutral similarly let's see if he does uh let's see if he does can can so hopefully punish that oh he did you know what i mean so can can it's like i did a 15 frame punish i got a launcher uh, you, you get the idea. The idea is that you want to hit them with the most appropriate thing for what they did. Right? In this case, it would be a 14 frame or a 15 frame. You know what I mean? But, at the wall, be, uh, you don't really want to do that all the time because you actually want to maximize your wall damage. And interestingly, this is when things are a bit different. Because what happens at the wall is that his launchers don't all have the same even damage. If you do a launcher in mid-screen you do a combo it gives you solid damage anyway because it's a solid launcher right if you do a launcher and it takes you to the wall it's amazing damage because of the wall carry but if you do the launcher at the wall it actually doesn't give you the damage you want let me explain arc blast in neutral is good because you can get like an, a solid combo that carries across the wall right but arc blast at the wall you don't get the same kind of thing you can do like the combo routes that normally work for Arc Blast and Neutral don't quite work the same way at the wall. Do you see what I mean? They don't work the same way. So down for a two starter doesn't work. I mean, it hits them, but it sort of knocks them on the wall. You don't get a real combo. Right? And, and it's actually much harder to hit in general because they don't fall in the same way. So the only ender you can do at the wall for Arc Blast is just down back to one, forward one plus four. Right? That's 49 damage. That's not great like at all that's terrible actually similarly for his 14 frame forward back to one you get down forward one right you get down forward one which is is good that's what you want because the normal wall ender is i mean let's just do forward one plus four down forward one down back to one forward one plus four that's the that's the normal wall ender if you do forward back to one down forward one down back to one forward one plus four okay 57 that's not bad but the fact of the matter is here's what's interesting the punish you want to do at the wall, 90% of the time, is 424. And there's a reason for that. 424 is 32 damage starter. And because the, the 4 wall splats them, you get the wall combo, right? So you've probably seen that before. 424, down forward 1, down back to 1, forward 1 plus 4, 68 damage. That's what you want for the wall punish. It doesn't matter what they do, if it's 12 frames or more, 424 them, because that is the optimal punish at the wall. You don't, I mean, you might have the muscle memory to do forward back to one if you see it's minus 14, but no. If it's anything more than minus 12 at the wall, always 424. Because in neutral, 424 just knocks them down. It just knocks them away. It doesn't do anything else. And obviously, if they do something more unsafe, you want a launcher that gives you a carry to the wall. You see what I mean? 
But at the wall, you actually want to do 424 instead. Because 424 is a 32 damage starter. Whereas the other ones, look, in fact, here's another fun fact about Lars' moves that maybe not everyone's aware of, but I think it's a fun tidbit anyway. The majority of Lars' launchers, with the exception of, well, Almighty Up Forward 3, which is 26 damage, but obviously it floats them weird so you don't get a real combo, Lars' launchers are all 20 damage. All of them. Up Forward 4, 20. Forward Back to 1, 20. Right? Arc Blast, 20. Do you see what I mean? Similarly, Send 3, Silent Entry 3, 20. All of his launchers are 20 damage. Obviously, his counter one, counter hit ones aren't. Right? His counter hit ones are 20 to 24. But with the exception of Up Forward 3, Up Forward 4, Forward Back to 1, Arc Blast, they're all 20 hit launchers. That's why if you do a 20 hit launcher at the wall and you do the wall ender, you're just getting suboptimal stuff because you're actually just doing a mid-screen launcher that's meant to carry to the wall. At the wall, you want 424 because 424 is what gives you the optimal damage. It gives you that, the clean 68. Now, it's possible in some scenarios, not all, but it's possible in some scenarios to actually wall splat them with 424. So you kind of have to have that presence of mind like, am I close to the wall? And if I am close to the wall, perhaps... I shouldn't do my normal launcher because the temptation is there like if you're about this far from the wall the temptation is there to do your normal hit launcher if you see the appropriate move but the thing is if you're close enough to the wall 424 might actually wall splat like that you see what I mean and that's actually better so what you want to do is that you do 424 it wall splats and typically depending on your distance from the wall um, you want to do den 1 you want to do 431 right dynamic entry 1 so if it wall splats, do den 1 to catch them, down back to 1, forward 1 plus 4. So if you're kind of a few feet away from the wall, 4, 2, 4 is still a good option because of the wall spot. You see what I mean? And it's typically a clean wall spot. Not all the time, but it's typically a clean wall spot. Obviously from a certain distance it's not going to work that well. From that distance it didn't work at all. So you can't always rely on it. Right? You have to kind of really get good with the range, so you can't just sort of abuse it. But look at the scenario where, let's say, I'm very close to the wall, and they did a minus 14 move. So I do forward back to 1, right? That didn't really work because of the way forward back to 1's animation works. So unfortunately, that combo doesn't work. So you end up having to do something like this. Forward back to... Oops, no, it's not forward back to 1. Forward back to 1... Right, look at that. That is terrible. That's suboptimal because you're way too close to the wall, so you don't get the full output of doing forward back to one. You really actually want to do four two four where possible. In fact, some of you uh, savvy Lars players may already know that if you do back three four, it has the same effect because obviously back three four is his four ender, therefore it wall splats. So you can do den one into the follow up and so on and so forth. So it actually works very similarly. So let's say your opponent whiffed something from that range but not uh, not on block you can do back 3-4 and if it wall splats that's a little bit too far so let me see if I can sort of replicate this there you go so back 3-4 to whiff punish and then den 1 follow up so at the wall your punishes change slightly you have to kind of keep that in mind I would honestly say if you're right next to him I'm not talking about like over here when you're with punishing and at the wall, just get it in your head. I'm at the wall. Whatever they do that isn't like a jab or whatever, I 4 2 for it. You see what I mean? Because you'll get that clean whiff punish. Oh, you get the clean block punish, sorry. It's going to knock them into the wall. Right? It doesn't matter what they did. 4 2 for every time. That's the optimal punish. There's very rare situations where your opponent will do something that's like minus 16 plus. And in it, only in that scenario can you get an even bigger punish. So hopefully... I can get uh, Jin to do it, and I'll show you what I mean. If, if your opponent does something minus 16 plus, you can get a big punish. There we go, like that. You can get back to 3. So that's actually slightly better. Uh, well, I say slightly better, it's literally 1 point extra. <laughs> but, um, I mean, points, they, they do help. So back to 3, right? I am using 3 plus 4, but you can do obviously back to 3. Back to 3 is 33 damage starter, and you can do the same wall combo. Now, as I'm sure you can tell, because it's only one extra damage, you probably don't really want to risk 
it if you don't know the exact frames because back to 16 so you don't want to really use that if you're not sure it's kind of a situational thing too it depends on the move they do so back two doesn't have amazing range it ha its range is okay because he does sort of take a step forward when he does that right so if you can sort of work out the range sure because it might it might very well be that 424 doesn't really hit in the range you want it to whereas back two does and that's the only situation where you'd want to use it but once again, that's super situational. It depends on if they did a move that ha just happens to be minus 16 or more. But even if they did, I would personally, personally stick to 424. Because 424, it works nice and easy, clean damage. You see what I'm saying? So that's the kind of thing uh, they want to have the presence of mind for. Uh, okay, let's see. What do I want to cover next? So with that in mind, uh, since I, I, mean, I already touched briefly on sort of like with punishing, I guess, but... I think it's useful to sort of go over some of that stuff. So obviously you want to have your hand hovering over the two button when you're up close. But the question is, what do you do when you're not at like point blank range necessarily? Well, it, you have multiple options. So obviously up close, having your hand over two uh, is what gives you the punish options that you need. But when you're sort of at this range, uh, let's say you're you're sort of fighting at this range, which is typically you know to where both characters are in the middle of their health bars, if that gives you some positioning. You typically want to be in that kind of area, which gives you the opportunity to back three four. So I would say up close, you want your hand hovering over two, but in mid in mid screen, you want your hand hovering over three because three gives you options for back three four. And, of course, the almighty up forward three, right? So, mid-screen, have it over two. Uh, sorry, close uh, close screen, huh? Close range, or range zero, as some people call it. Have your finger or hand hovering over two. At mid-range, have it hovering over three, because it doesn't matter what they do, as long as you're at mid-range, mid, th mid range, this range, back three, four is going to hit them. You see what I mean? At this range, back three, four is always going to work. So, have your hand hovering over three and that's going to be your de facto with punish every time you see what i mean and this one's really good because it's got amazing reach don't do it there though because they're pressing the middle of your string and the second you see them with something just make him regret it you see what i mean from this range just always have your hand hovering over three and just you're just going to keep hitting them. you see what i mean just like that right similarly and this is more of a risk obviously because the first hit uh, sorry, because it's it's launch punishable. Not that everyone knows that. Fun fact: Ask most Lars players; they'll tell you up four three is hilariously underpunished, criminally underpunished. It's one of the most underpunished moves he has. So even though it's like minus twenty plus, most people don't punish it correctly. But let's say that you you're, you're feeling a certain type of way, and you figured out the range, which I, I would say I figured out for the most part, I guess. Uh, you actually want to ho hover over three and also here's the thing we typically call it up forward three but it's actually really up three you can actually just press up three or even up back three it's actually in the move list if you check the move list it's not just up forward three it's actually just up three in general so even if you press up three or up back three you get it so it, there are actually some unfortunate situations where you might accidentally get up back three uh, when you're playing, like, you might be, like, sort of doing this and that, and then you accidentally do up back three, and you're like, oh god. Because uh, there have been situations where I didn't mean to do that. So, let's say that you're not too comfortable with doing, like, from sort of holding back to sort of doing up forward, because you have to kind of go diagonal, which isn't hard for most people, but let's say you're not comfortable with it, and it's much easier to go up back instead, so from back to up back. You can do that. So in neutral, from sort of about, you know, this range, once again, keep in mind if your character is in the middle of the health bar, you can do up back three. Like that. You see what I mean? So you're holding back, you're holding back. They whiff, you do up back three. You don't do up forward three. You you keep it. Whoop, that was not up back three at all. That was like up <laughs> jump back three. That was way too far, I was ambitious. There we go. So you see what I mean? So from ab about there, you can... That's not... <laughs> wasn't a punish. You can do up back three instead. You don't have to do up forward three if you're not comfortable doing that. Right? But that's only if you're used to doing... If you're comfortable doing the... Like basically, if you want to risk 
doing a move like that, but obviously it gives you a launcher. Whereas with back three, four, you only get a knockdown. You see what I mean? Uh, that said, and I'm sure you probably have gathered this already, up forward three at the wall isn't great, like, at all. Up forward three at the wall is one of those really... It's funny, it's like a meme, but it, it's not actually that good at the wall because you don't get like a decent combo. Because look at that, it hits them weird. You don't really get your normal combo, you kind of have to... Because you because it believes you in crouching, you see. So you don't really get a normal combo. So I wouldn't really do up four three at the wall. Because it's not it's not like other characters where they can hop kick you at the wall and get like a full combo. If you up four three at the wall, you basically have given up your turn because you get like a really whack combo. The combo I might recommend is probably something like this. So up four three while standing four, forward one plus four. It's not really great and it's not really a combo technically, but that's really, if, if, if by some freak accident you up forward three at the wall, that's really your best option. Right? It's it's not great, but anyway. Uh, oh, my CPU is freaking out. Hold on, what's going on? What's going on? Okay, are, are we good? Did we drop any frames? No, we're good. No drop frames. Yeah, stream, streaming is a blow-off, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, yeah, like as I said, you probably don't want to be up forward three and get the wall, uh, like ever. I if you can help it, don't up forward three at the wall. Trust me. So once again, uh, in close range, do two one, uh, do two one. We'll do have your hand over two, so you can basically whiff punish with two. And if you're at mid screen, sort of about thereish. Uh, hold on, let me just quickly. Sorry, I got distracted by something. Uh, modern technology, I guess. If you're, yeah, if you're mid-screen or sort of where you're in the middle of your character's health bar, then you back 3-4, right? So back 3, oops, that is not back 3, back 3-4. Three, and that's basically what you want to do. So uh, normally I would have sort of answered questions, but it seems like nobody's asking questions. So by, by the way, I should mention that feel free to ask any questions, uh, anything you want to see in the stream chat. Uh, obviously for YouTube viewers, you can't because you're watching this the future but for those of you watching the twitch stream right now i'll ask any questions and i'll go through them so because those are the main things i want to cover today uh and that's why i was hoping to answer this is going to be a long stream as the other one i feel like that last stream was was pretty kind of on the nose and kind of just coming up with all this stuff but you know but let me uh run through some more of those uh crazy oops <laughs> if he does it again so like i said it's it's tricky being ready all the time that was not the right pun. It was four two one, man. But I think that's a good way to pun, uh, to sort of practice, because then it just gets you used to seeing the moves and just being able to react appropriately. So uh, one of those sort of distinctions is like forward back two one. With forward back two one, because it's minus, because it's a fourteen frame move as a fourteen frame startup, that really can just be your launch punish for everything. In fact, if you want it to be, it could be, because whereas Arc Blast, that's his 15 frame punish, it doesn't have the best range, and there are some, not, all, not always, and they have increased the range of it. There are some scenarios, that's, that's pretty good, but there are some scenarios where for, uh, for, uh, forward 1 plus 2, Arc Blast, actually just whiffs as a block punish, not a whiff punish, as a block punish, right? Whereas forward back to 1, as I'm sure you just saw, has much better range. So not only is it a decent whiff punish, it's actually a decent block punish too because it compensates for the, the pushback by moving Lars forward. So as long as you're comfortable with that input, forward back to one ostensibly becomes his best block punish for minus 14 plus moves, uh, as in for minus 14 or more moves, and one of his best whiff punishes anyway. In fact, the reason why I would relegate that to be his 14 frame plus launcher and not anything else is because to give away secrets here uh forward back to one is minus 18 that is launch punishable by everyone in the game and not a lot of people know that because it, it's 14 frames it's really fast people see it they block it they're like i don't know what that was i, I don't know how to punish that uh, i'm just gonna jab right that's the thing but they don't know it's launch punishable and the good players do know that and if you're smart you wouldn't just throw it out because you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, forward back 2-1, it's really fast, that means I can just throw it out of time. Sure, it's it's a good risk, but keep in mind that because it's a two-hitting launcher, right, it's a two-hitting launcher, there could be a chance that they only get hit by the second hit or the first hit trades, and unlike, say, other launchers, you don't actually get, like, a full thing. So, 
honestly, I would save it for a block punish because it is your best block punish and your best whiff punish, at least in mid range like this. You see what I mean? So I would save it. That is not forward back to you on what a weird OS. Yeah, I would save it for your block punish because I honestly think it does so much better in this scenario than it does just throwing it out randomly. What I would throw out randomly though, because let's be honest, is there, there's no reason not to, is Arc Blast. Because Arc Blast is minus 13. It used to be minus 14, but it's minus 13 to so like most hop kicks. So like most characters' hop kicks. And Arc Blast, because it's like low risk, low risk, pretty high reward. The range isn't great, as I'm sure you can see. The range is, let me look at that. It's going right through Jin's hands, like yeesh. But the range isn't great, but because it's only minus 13, you can honestly just throw it out. Not all the time, obviously, because certain characters with decent 10 frame punishes will murder you for it. But if you use it, and you know the appropriate combos, right? Mm, a little bit too far. Arc Blast becomes really good. And as I'm sure you've seen a lot of Lars players do, they do sidestep Arc Blast. Because what sidestep Arc, uh, Arc Blast does is it hits them, like, they'll whiff a move, right? A move that might be linear. You hit them in the side, and you still you get a full combo on them. Obviously, that's a bit more of sort of the medium tier combo. But you can do something a bit simpler like this. Down 4-2, down back 2-1, down 4-2-1, etc. Right? That's not as much damage, but it still works really well. Or my old combo, which I used to do, is down 4-2, down 4-2-1, etc. And so forth. You see what I mean? So, sidestep Arc Blast is one of those really good things. I wouldn't just sidestep and do it. It really is one of those things that, like, you, you could just sidestep and do it. And sometimes it just hit people. Right? But you actually want to do it depending on what the opponent does. So, for example, if your opponent loves pressing certain strings in certain situations, and you're privy to that, like, for example, let's say they do a low, and then they do, like, a, a forward-moving string. Okay, if, if you get hit by or block the low, do sidestep arc blast because you recognize that they keep doing the sequence of events, and you'll arc blast them to put them on notice. And I think that's a really smart decision. So, it's, it's tricky to sort of show that without having anything recorded, but, uh, I mean, well, I could kind of show it with... Yeah, so you see what I mean? Like, he was doing... Oops. Well, it actually tracks, wow. You can kind of sidestep... Not that move, wow. You can sort of sidestep certain moves, not all moves. And if you suspect that they'll press something, you can hit them with Arc Blast to do. It's probably much better to show you if I let the CPU go for a bit. So if the CPU goes for a bit, I'll kind of get hit by Hell Sweep to start off with. That's awesome. Oh, do you, so do you see that? What I did was, I did 2-1, which leaves me a plus, and then I did sidestep because I basically evaded what they were doing and hit them with Arc Blast. So if I can kind of demonstrate again... There we go. You see what I mean? So he did a move. He did a little stanky like. I did sidestep Arc Blast. And I got him. And, and even if they block it, it's only minus 13, so the risk reward's not too bad, right? They can only get what their typical knockdown punish or just basic 10 frame punish is. So, depending on the matchup, you might actually just be entirely fine. You don't actually have to worry about anything. You see what I mean? So, that in a situation like that, that's where sidestep arc blast is really good. You can also throw it out in neutral. So, you remember, those of you who watched... Um, those of you who watched my original Lars Lab livestream, which I went over everything. I, I covered frame traps. So, for frame traps, you can do something basic like that. So, a down back 2 1, which is plus 5. All right, you can do a down back 2 1, which is plus 5, into back 4, which is uh, 15. So, you, of course, get a frame trap. You can, if, you, if you're feeling adventurous, do, if I can hit him with it, down back 2 1, arc blast, because that's the same thing. You're putting them at minus frames, and then you're hitting them with a launcher. Right? And if they press a button, they get hit. You see what I mean? You get a counter hit. So, counter hit Arc Blast is actually pretty powerful too. So, even though sidestep Arc Blast is like a whiff punish, basically, like you're sidestepping their move and whiff punishing them, if you do Arc Blast point blank, you get counter hit, which it might actually be better because, once again, it's the same thing. It's not a huge risk. It's, you can do a move that's plus, like a down back 2 1, or a 2 1, or a den 2, right? And then you do Arc Blast afterwards, and if they press a button, you get counter hit Arc Blast, which is even, it's ever so slightly more damage. So to demonstrate, let me do like a standard, decent combo that uses counter hit Arc Blast as a starter. So let's just do from this range so I get enough 
space for the carry. Counter hit Arc Blast. And then you've probably seen this sort of combo sequence a billion times. Ouch. Like, that's 73 damage, right? That That's really painful, right? And that's for, like, a frame trap. So you, you would do... Right, you would do... Uh, let me see if I can get the CPU to get hit by it. So down back 2-1. Arc Blast. Oh, he parried it because he's Jim. Now makes you want Arc Blast, counter hit, see? And then you finish the combo sequence. Right? Oh, was that counter hit or not? Huh, no, it was a regular hit. Weird. I thought I saw a counter on the screen. Very strange. There we go, counter hit that time. I mean, but you get the idea, right? So if you basically do a frame trap, you can either choose between a safe back four, which is just a counter hit, throw, and knock down. Or an Arc Blast, which on counter hit obviously does even more, and that's the good reason to do that. But that, that's why if you have that presence of mind, which I was talking about before, and you have your hand slash finger hovering over the 2 button, you can be ready for certain stuff like that. So I would personally save forward back 2-1. I mean, this is up to you, but I would personally save forward back 2-1 to be his launch punish. The, the difficult thing with forward back 2-1 is going from back to forward to back, that, that that sort of quick motion like that. You see what I mean? You can see in the inputs. A lot of people have sort of issue with that because it's not like just forward one plus two or you know forward two four where it's just back forward two four. It's like it's literally in this blink of an eye you're doing back forward back, right? Really quickly. Because you're holding back and it's forward back. So a lot of people do struggle with that input, and that's fair enough. So that's why it takes a lot of practice to get used to doing that, especially on block. I can't really say there's any trick to it, because there isn't really other than doing it. But one thing you can do is you can neutral block. So as I'm sure you may or may not know, in Tekken, if you don't press anything, so I'm not holding, pressing anything, I'm not holding back, your character just neutral guards. This is effective in general, but the one thing it doesn't protect you from is certain strings. Certain strings in the game basically go through neutral block. So if you're not holding back to block, you'll actually get hit. So in the case of Jin, he doesn't have too many sort of natural strings which eat through ne uh, neutral block, but uh, just keep that in mind. So in terms of punishing stuff with forward back 2-1, and this is actually harder, I would say. I, I would say learning it this way is harder than actually just learning the input. If you want to get good with a forward back 2-1 just at first, what you can do is try just neutral blocking. So just let go of the direction, and if they do something you just do forward back 2-1 without having to do because you're not holding back. Do you see what I mean? But keep in mind there's not going to be any of those too slow. There's not going to be too many scenarios where you'll get to just stand absolutely still. I mean, the mark of it, like an amazing pro player is being able to stand in someone's face and do nothing like that. Like, that's pretty scary, but there's very few situations where you'll just get to stand in their face doing nothing. Honestly, so... Uh, you, but if you want to practice forward back 2-1 just to, for punish, you can just sort of stand still. And that was why did I get back three? Wow. You can just stand still and not press back and just do forward back to you one in neutral and see if you can get the input down. Right, if you're not used to it. And then once you're ready, you can start holding back and start doing forward back to one. Which is it's a little bit tricky to get used to. Because like there's no trick to it. You really have to just do you just have to hold back and then literally the second I do anything, oops. Sort of walking out of range. The second they do anything, that's not minus fourteen. You have to do forward back to you one. Like it's a, it's a, it's a really quick input. There's no real trick to it, as such. So I'm trying to think of if any if there's anything else I want to cover. So for those who who don't know on Twitch or on YouTube, I did a Lars live live stream several weeks ago, and that video went all over a lot of Lars stuff, like a lot of like very interesting situational stuff but I think what I want to do for these live streams is to cover a specific topic and maybe I'll sort of ask people what they want to see this was one I personally wanted to cover because I felt that this might be useful to people so that's why I want to do this whole combat readiness thing because I feel like that's a that's a tricky thing that a lot of people when especially when they're learning aren't really sure and I mean I can't speak for other characters like at all but being the resident uh, Lars aficionado, I can at least explain to you that with Lars in particular, your options are something like this, right? Your options are two, because he his punishes revolve around two. Two, one, four, two, four, four back to one, and forward one plus two. That's not forward one plus two. Forward one plus two, right? Though his punish options 
close range revolve around the two button and typically followed by one. So as I'm sure you saw, two, one, right? Forward, back, two, one. Forward, two, four, and finally forward, one plus two, or you could even say forward two plus one if you want to look at it that way. So the fact, the point is, you can do, you can do something. So here's an interesting concept that some of you may be familiar with. It's something I knew about just from fighting games in the past, but this is something that applies to Tekken as well. And it's the co oh, what is going on? My frames are freaking out again, man. It, it's interesting. I'm not dropping frames, but like OBS is freaking out a little bit, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, hopefully the stream's not like choppy for anyone. So. Here's a concept that's interesting. It's the concept of, I guess you could call it negative edge, although negative edge applies more to sort of inputs in like any of my Street Fighter, but if you press a button and let it go, right? well, I mean, how do I explain this in a way that makes sense? If you press a button, right, and you're still holding the button, notice how on screen it says I'm still pressing two, but Lars isn't doing anything, right? I'm still holding two, right? But I'm not actually doing, I'm not actually, he's not actually doing anything. If I let go of two and then it's gone. I press two, I'm holding it, the game registers me as holding it. Now look what happens when I press one. No, not, four, uh, what's his name? Four, uh, one. It, it, the game registers it as one plus two. You see what I mean? In this game, Lars doesn't have a, uh, a neutral one plus two, that's why I'm just getting jacked. But look what happens when I do two, I'm holding two. You see, I'm holding two and I'm moving around. And then I do back. I get back one plus two, right? Look, look at this. Back one plus two. That's back one plus two on its own. I press two. I'm holding two. I press back one. I get back one plus two, right? Now that is, I mean, input buffering. And it depends on your play style. But let's say you play on stick or hitbox. This might actually be a bit better for you because, depending on what sort of things you do, you could actually use this to your advantage. So. I don't know how many situations where it's applicable, but it might be useful depending on your playstyle. So let's say that you want to focus on doing an arc blast punch, right? But you don't use a controller, you or you don't use a macro setup. If you have your, your you press two, right, at some point, and then they do a launch punishable move, you press forward one, you get forward one plus two, right, and so on and so forth. So, uh, this works very similarly the other way around. So I pressed one. I press back two, right? I get back one plus two. Notice how I'm still holding one and I'm just pressing back two. I'm still holding one. I can move around, right? The game lets me move around and do everything, right? But I get back one plus two when I just tap two. Similarly, I'm holding one and I press two and forward and I get forward one plus two. I get arc blast. So that's a thing that you could use if you're not using macros. This is good for stick and hitbox users because it means that you only have to ever focus on pressing one button instead of having to press two. So instead of doing arc blast, let's say, I mean, there's ways to hide it, right? I mean, sometimes your opponent may or may not know what button you're holding, but I mean, look, I've done jab, right? And I've let it go. I've done jab and I've held it. There's no visual indication on the character that you're holding a button. And when they let it go, they don't do anything. But I held jab. I'm playing neutral. I press forward two. I get forward one plus two. You see what I mean? And I, th I think that's a really cool little thing you can do that I don't know. I don't know how useful that is for every play style. But I certainly think it'll be useful for people who play like say on stick or hitbox. And they might not necessarily like or use, right? And they might not like or use macros. So that's a little tip that you can do uh, if you're interested. Um, in terms of something like a forward back 2-1, well, that doesn't really work. Because the problem with forward, because, because the issue with forward back 2-1 is the input is forward back 2. You see what I mean? So if you do, like what I just explained, you can't like sort of cheat it and, and hold the 1 and then do forward back you know, because that, that would be weird. Because if, if you could, like, sort of cheat and do hold one and do forward back two to get forward back, well, no, you're just, you're just going to get one, forward one plus two every time. So you're just going to get back one plus two every time because the game isn't going to read the forward input. Or it might just read the forward input for Arc Blast and you get that instead. So you see what I mean? 
So for certain inputs like forward, back, T1, you can't cheat. That said, back in Season 1, not Season 2, you used to be able to OS it. Now, option selects are a bit of a tricky thing to explain anyway, and they're definitely tricky to explain in this game. But the best way to describe it is there's certain inputs that work even if you pressed the non-specific one. The best, the easiest way to ex explain it is this. Back 3, 4 is, of course, literally back 3, 4. But if I do back 3 plus 4, the game only does back 3 because there is no back 3 plus 4. There's only back 3. You see what I mean? Back 3, back 3 plus 4. There is no back 3 plus 4. So if I do back 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, the game is going to read that as 3, 4, because there's only, the only inputs that exist in back 3 and back, uh, back 3 plus 4 and 3 plus 4 is back 3 and back 4. So, I get back 3, 4, right? Even though I did back 3 plus 4 and 3 plus 4. And that works for me because I mapped that to my R2 button, right? And that's, that, that becomes my de facto whip punish. So instead of doing back 3, 4, which is a 2 button input, I'm doing a 1 button input, which is back 3, 4, back 3, 4, right? So that's that, how that works. And the only reason I'm explaining that is it used to be that in Season 1 of Tekken 7, you used to be, not anymore, you used to be able to do forward back to 1 by doing forward back 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2. Now this doesn't work anymore, and you can try it a billion times, but you will only ever get back 1 plus 2. I don't know why they took out this specific input, because you can still do back 3, 4, you can still do forward 3, 4. You can still do forward 3, 4 as a substitute for forward 3. I don't know why they took out the back 1 plus 2. Uh, the, what's the name? The forward back 2 1 as 1 plus 2? Because that used to be a very sort of nice thing you could do. So instead of doing the forward back 2 1 input, you could literally do forward back 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 input. And that worked just fine. Um, obviously, you can't cheat. So here, here's an example of a move that has an actual input. So up forward 3, that is an input right up four three plus four that's also an input so that doesn't work but as i said back three is an input but no back three four exists so you will always get that but they took out the ability to do forward back to one with with that so that used to be something interesting so forward back to one uh you you really gotta you really have to commit to the movie you really you gotta just do it now uh since we're at the sort of this portion and i feel like i've covered a lot of the stuff I wanted to cover. What I'll now do is I will. Uh, I'm not planning to run the stream too long. I will actually actually run the stream for probably like an hour and a half, or maybe less. Uh, if there's questions, I was probably going to go for longer, but it doesn't seem to be any questions right now. So uh, I guess save all your questions for the YouTube video. Uh, I, d I did kind of announce this stream. It is a bit of a bummer that there's not many viewers. I was hoping to have a few more viewers and a few more viewer questions, but uh, that's all right. I don't I don't mind too much. I don't mind too much. Uh, holy moly! Oh, sorry, I got a <laughs> got a message. I don't mind too much. Uh, I, but it would have been cool to have questions. Last time uh, I had Sid talks in the chat. He asked like the majority of questions. So one thing, the last thing I'll probably show on stream is that is something. This is more of a personal thing, I guess. But uh, one of the things that was really plaguing me in season two was trying to find a combo that worked for everything now you remember in the last lars lab i basically explained that a brain dead combo you can do is one that one that works with basically every starter is this it's uh den two down foot one down foot two one uh den one back three four no sorry back three send one right uh that was word gibberish but you basically saw that so let me let me do that again up forward four Den 2, down forward 1, down forward 2, 1, Den 1, back 3, Sen 1. And this basically works for every starter, as I explained in the previous uh, Lars Lab entry. And this literally works for everything, right? Works for forward back to 1, right? It works for every starter, which is super useful. But one of the things that bothered me sort of from the transition to from Season 2 to Season 3 was finding a decent combo that had decent wall carry, decent damage, and looked kind of flashy, and was also kind of useful. Now, in Season 3, it's a bit interesting, because the, the staple combo a lot of people did in Season 1 and 2 was actually this. It was something like, it was either Sen 1 starter, 
or it was down forward one. But let me just do the one everyone else does so you have an idea. So it's like down forward one, forward one, two, three, one plus two, dash, down forward one, back three, center one. As I'm sure you saw, that is 68. That is suboptimal. That is suboptimal AF now. At the time, uh, sorry, let's say 68, 66. At the time, that was good. Now, eh. So, because now, look, look, how, look how easy this is. This combo is just so much easier now. Two, and because you can do den one into back three, 69. That is now the optimal damage, right? In just in general. There's no reason to do the other one. But as much as I like it, and look, it has everything. It is easy. It works for basically every starter. The wall carry is really good. But I personally had the problem. This is honestly a personal problem. This has nothing to do with like the actual move. I mean, look at that. That works for like everything. Solid damage, solid wall carry. I personally had an issue where I didn't particularly like that that was the option. Not because there's anything wrong with it, but one, I don't love doing Den, uh, what's the name, down forward three down. I don't particularly love down forward three down as the starter because I've always found it a bit finicky, even though now I do it fairly consistently out off of like everything. I, and also, I, you know, the input delay is better. I still find it not the best thing. So this is all a very long-winded way of saying that like I'm trying, I tried to discover a brand new, let's call it tournament combo. Because you can have multiple different combo starters, but you kind of do just need one solid combo that kind of gets the job done. In season one, for me, it was something like this. It was, that is not forward back to one. It was then one, forward one, two, three. Look at that, beautiful. Carries right to the wall. Solid damage, 84, right? That's fantastic. And that still works in Season 3. There's no reason not to use it. But the only issue is that if you don't get that 1-2 uh, wall splat, your options then become limited because you have to do the 1 plus 2. Uh, you have to do the 1 plus 2, and then you have to do, like, dash down for 2 or whatever. Or, worst case scenario, you don't get that, and then you have to actually kind of do something really ghetto, like you have to do like that. And then your wall combo options become very limited. That said... There is a combo you can do that fulfills all of the objectives that you want, that I want uh, in a Season 3 combo. Check this out. So, in the Brain Dead combo, what's useful is it actually utilizes one of his new properties, which is the ability to do back 3 after Den 1 in the combo. That That's new. That's not something that was in Season 2, because normally you'd have to do down back 2. Down back 2 was the ender last time. You, that's actually new. That's actually a new thing. So uh, so honestly, if you do down back two ender, right? You used to get down back two three, which was for the wall carry, right? But now you don't have to do that. Now you can actually do back three four, right? And it works in that combo. The issue is this combo, the, the one I told you, the brain dead one, quote unquote, this one's wall carry sucks. Like it's not great. As I'm sure you, you can see, it doesn't go very far, it's really slow. Whereas the Season 2 combo, much better wall carry, much faster, and it would cover so much distance in a short time. Right? And it still works! Like, it doesn't not work, but look at that, that's really good. 90 damage covers a lot of distance in a long time, that's really solid, right? That said, there is a combo option that utilizes the extra added damage to Den 2, but also I, I utilizes the ability to do back 3-4 at the end of the combo, which is also new. So now, typically, you can start a combo with Den 2, just like in the combo I've been showing you so far. And then you go to down forward 1, right? Now, some of the higher damage in combos actually utilize two Den 2. So, for example, Den 2, down for 3, down Den 2, and then it's like jab, whatever. So the combo you've probably seen before, if you've seen in my uh, combo video, please, KBD, thank you. Is Dan 2, down for 3, Dan 2, 2. Okay, no, there's no 2 in that combo. That's weird. Let me try that again. So Dan 2, down for 3, down, Dan 2. Back 3, 4, dash. That was, wow, that was terrible. We tried not to mess that up. <laughs> I'm sure if Sitox was here, he'd tell me to do the. What's his name? The 3, 4, etc. That was not it, man. I suck. Someone in the YouTube uh, comment said that like probably shouldn't be doing co practice combos. I'm, I'm trusting. I'm trying not to. I'm actually trying to, try to do the combo. So okay, there you go. So like that's kind of like what it looks like. But there was actually a combo that you could do in season one 
that utilized the double den too, but it actually ended sooner. But the comp the damage actually wasn't all that good. It was only like 65. But now that den two does more damage, this combo does 68. Let me show you. Right, den two down for three down. Den two. What? Man, imagine dropping it on the first demonstration. Hold up. So, den two down three three down. Den two, dude. Imagine dropping. Wow. Why am I so bad at this all of a sudden? Hold on. For three down, then two back one. So back one, even though that's a cr like that's a crap screw ender, it, like the damage isn't great. Out of all of his screw enders being back one down four two one back three four, back one's damage isn't great. That said, it does give you certain options. So then two, then two back one, and you do dash down forward one. So the original combo in season one and two was then two down for three down, then two back one. Dash, down forward one, back three, forward one, so send one ender. Notice how that's 68 damage. That used to be 65, but because Den 2 now does two extra damage, it went from 17 to 19, um, it now does extra damage anyway, right? So doing that combo, which used to do 65, now does 68. And I noticed something very interesting. That, because of using back one, you save a juggle point. If you do down for two in the combo, or if you do two down for two like you saw, it knocks them so far back you don't get a really decent ender. However, if you do, right, then two, down for two, down, uh, down for three, down, uh, sorry, let me fix my face. I'm trying to explain it while it's happening. If you do den two, down for three, down den two, right, the double den two, let's call it. If you do the double den two, back three, look at that, back one, you actually get the back three for ender. Which I was really surprised. I'm like, oh wait, you get back 3-4 off that? I didn't think you could. But yeah, you can. Right, back 1. Back 3-4. Now, let me show you something. With that in mind, you now have a combo that uses two Den 2s. It uses the new back 3-4 extension. And has decent wall carry. So it actually covers all the bases. So, from about this distance, you can do this. Right? You see what I mean? And look at that wall carry. That's really good. Right? That was a little bit too close, actually, funnily enough. So, now 3 three down. Right? Back one. That's way too far, unfortunately. I'm trying to get the optimal range. So, I'm there, I'd say. Now 3 down. Back 3-4. Look at that. And look at the damage. 96. Ouch. Frigging ouch. Right? That is at least half screen right it's fairly easy to do and it does 93 freaking damage that is insane right that's fantastic and my cpu is freaking out what is going on like windows explorer is freaking out like i don't know why i don't know what's going on uh hopefully it's still no drop frames which is good it's just my cpu is freaking out a little bit but yeah so with and also the nice thing about this combo is it works from basically every starter. So forward back to one, then two, now for three down, then two, back one. In this case, I'm close enough, so I'll just do one, two. But do you see what I mean? Look at that, 92. For comparison's sake, let me show you. The season two one, the forward three, two, one, one, oops, drop. The forward uh, one, two, three, one. Even if you did the full thing, right, which is dash down for two, one. That's 90 damage. Great wall carry, but that's only 90 damage. Whereas, if you do this new Season 3 one... I think I'm too close. Yeah, I'm too close. E okay, even with just 1-2, you get 92. But let's say I'm a little bit further. I think that's close enough. Look how he just takes him across the entire thing. Look at that. Over half screen, 96 damage. That is so good. That is really solid. Right? That's what you want to be doing. And that, to me, this has now become my quote-unquote tournament combo. Because it's a combo I don't have to think about. I can just do for every single uh, starter. And it works really well. Now, for the sake... For example, uh, it works off of counter hit den 2 as well. So you can do counter hit den 2. This is too far, I think. Yeah, it's too far. But, but you get the idea. And even if you don't hit the wall, you still have amazing wall carry, right? So that's th so as I'm sure you can count, uh, that's three Den 2s in that combo. That's really powerful. 
Right, look at that. Back three, four. Look at that wall card. Look at that. 98 damage. That's nearly 100 damage. That's insane. That's nearly 100 damage. Without rage, by the way. Without rage, that's nearly 100 damage. And I'm sure you're curious. How much does that do in rage? Well, you're about to find out. Trust me. It's, it's pretty insane. So, in rage... This freaking hurts, dude. I think I'm too close to him. I'm fine. 106 damage in rage. You, you, that would, 106 damage used to be the damage of rage drive combos. Like full screen wall carry rage drive combos. And now you're doing that much damage simply with a freaking normal wall carry. That said, and let me show you this, I think it's actually pretty cool. Is, um, I, th I don't know if this stage, I think this stage is a little bit too big, but it might work. So, with the exception of, well, let me, let me just say, for up forward for starter, you can actually get a pretty easy full full stage wall carry. So, up forward four, then two, down forward three, down, then two, except when I drop it, because I'm doing it. I think um, it's a combination of my stream setup lag slash, I'm, I'm waiting too long, so... Down for three, down, then two. Do, I'm waiting way too long. That's my. That's what my problem is. My timing is off. Should, definitely shouldn't be dropping that. There we go. Back one. Back three. Rage drive. Look at that. So that's really good. That go basically that combo option. You can just go straight into rage drive off of it. No problem. Uh, if it's a slightly shorter stage, you wouldn't need to do the uh, the, the Ender, which is uh, Sen... Well, what's the name? You wouldn't have to do the Sen 3 Ender. If, if you're about here, you can actually just do Den 1. You see what I mean? You could actually do that. And that's 98, because I was a little bit too from the far from the wall. But if I can be a little bit closer, I can probably actually get a better Ender. This might be close enough. That was way too close, oh boy. A little bit too close. It, judging the distance of these things is always a bit tricky. Especially for demonstration purposes. Okay, I don't know if you saw my inputs, but I swear I pressed 2 there. That's why I don't love down for 3 down. It's not as hard in the juggle, but still. Why is that too close? What the heck? <laughs> why is that too close? Okay, wow, my... Even my friggin' KBD's messing up. I'll blame it on the stream setup. Nah, no, I don't know, it's messing up. This should be far enough this time. There we go. And then down by 2-1. Yeah, look at that. So that's 107 after doing like a, what is it, like 90% uh, uh, stage wall carry, right? But then I earlier on showed you doing roughly that same damage, just with rage and just doing the normal combo which takes you so far across the screen, no rage needed, all because of back 3-4 Ender, and it hits them to the wall. That's so useful. So that, to me, is now my combo that I use basically just for most starters. And uh, as I'm sure you're probably guessing, it works off of counter hit down 4-2, so it works off the tag 2 now, which is nice. Back 3-4. Look at that, 98 damage. Oof, that's so good. Uh, now, if you're probably you're probably wondering about this too, that you can actually do four Den 2s in the combo, which is pretty amazing. The spacing's a bit tricky, but if I can get it, you'll see what I mean. Den 2. Den 2. Nope, I, I tried to do a different combo. Whoops. Think about, actually, oh no, you can actually do it from about here, so... Den 2. Back one. Oh, you have to actually do from uh, neutral starting. So, down two, down two, down two again. <laughs> so that's four den twos in that combo. The ender is not that powerful. That's only eighty nine, but that's four den twos in that combo, uh, which just looks really cool. It, you would you would hope it does a bit more, but doing den two at the end of the combo like that's actually worse. You probably actually just want to get the full thing. Mm, so to recap, uh, it's been uh, an hour now since the stream started. So to recap, I would say that uh, combat readiness, as I'd like to call it, for Lars specifically, I can't, like I said, I can't speak for any other character other than the character on screen right now, combat readiness is about utilizing all his moves that start with 2. 2-1, two 
four back two one, four two four, and so on. And that's what you want to be f uh, focusing on when you're up close and when you're in mid range. When you're let me get him to repeat after him. When you're in mid range, where you, as I said, your character is basically roughly in the middle of their health bar. You want to hover over back three because you get access to back three four and to up forward or up back three. So those are the the things you need to focus on when you're just fighting. Because if your if your mindset is with punishing, if you're you, you don't want to play up close, you want to play here, then keep your finger hovered over that back three because you'll get the back three four for the whiff punish. If you're up close, keep your finger hovered over the two because you have it ready for your four two fours and your forward back two ones, right? Uh, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, so let me see. I think that's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, like I said, that wasn't going to be a long stream. It was, really was just going to be quickly talk over some of these topics. And if there's going to be any questions in the chat, I would go over those. Unfortunately, no questions today. But hey, look, next time if you tune in, you can ask any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Because uh, what made the last stream really fun is we had lots of viewer interaction and lots of questions from the chat. And that's why I was able to test out different things. Uh, but ne uh, next time, join in. Next time, join in on the live stream. I don't know when the next live stream is going to be, but... I'll ask my YouTube viewers and uh, Twitch uh, or Twitter followers what they want to see and what they want to uh, want to go over. And hopefully, if they come tune into the stream, then we can go over that too. But I think that's it for now. So I will close the stream out uh, unless anyone wants to ask questions now. And uh, yeah, but before that, I think I got a message. There we go. But uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. If you tuned in, this is going to be on YouTube. This is going to be on YouTube probably this Saturday, I would say. Uh, so you can watch the stream archive if you missed anything. And give me some suggestions for the next thing you want to see for the next live stream. If, if you want it to be covering a specific topic, a specific part of the gameplay, specific tech, whatever, combos, or, or even characters. Because what may happen, and I think may be interesting, is to extend from doing punish vids, which I'll do anyway, but going from punish vids into sort of more general matchup like talk and like specificities and like weird scenarios and like and so on. I think it'll be very very interesting to examine the game from that sort of viewpoint. So let's say Jin, I did the Jin punish vid probably a year ago at this point it was very short it's very simple this is back when i was doing sf5 punish vids as well so i actually didn't do a, that comprehensive virgin punish vid so it might actually be useful or interesting to have like an entire stream dedicated to let's break this character down let's uh, look at the Lars matchup versus this character what what are my options against them? what are my punishes against them what, how do I deal with certain strategies and certain setups because it's not always just about the punishes sometimes it's about dealing with certain setups and dumb things people do because there might be unique things Lars can do to get out of them or, or to deal with it you know certain unique things like being able to power crush in the middle of their strings or being able to down back one plus two so I think uh, at some point, if these Lars, uh, these Lars labs are popular enough, I will begin to examine more specific, like, things. And I think that's what the, the streams are good for. The, the YouTube videos are good for, like, a nice, more planned, more dedicated content. But the, the streams are, like, anything goes. We can discuss whatever. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I will close out the stream. I very much appreciate you being here, if, uh, if, if you tuned in. And you can find me on YouTube. That is youtube.com slash C slash Justice Altoona. And obviously anywhere else you find the name Justice Altoona. So that's Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, and Tumblr, I guess, if you still use Tumblr. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been JST. And yeah, I will see you next time.